Welcome back. Before we get started, if you didn't know already, the new Ferrari LDMH car has been rolled out. And man, is it a looker. I wonder what model company is going to make that in 118 scale. TSM model, where TSM stands for True Scale Miniatures, is a die-cast model company that started in 2006. Their original offerings were fully die-cast opening models. Most of their subjects were historic race cars and Formula One cars. As time went on, they abandoned the die-cast material and went to fully sealed resin models. They also opened a separate division called Top Speed. Now, Top Speed continued where TSM left off which would be those historic race cars and Formula One cars, but they also expanded to modern race cars as well as passenger cars. Passenger cars considered companies like BMW, Chevrolet, and Ford. As you saw in my title, it is the many faces of top speed. And what I meant by that is, is my very first top speed model that I purchased, which was the Ford GT race car. It's a great model. I'm very pleased with it, no complaints. But as I purchased additional models from Top Speed, I noticed there were some inconsistencies with their quality. In other words, which is good, it was improving. But then I would buy other models and the quality would go back down to where it was previously. So there's some inconsistencies with the quality of their models. I'm not talking about defects so much, just the overall quality, the look, the materials, the conciseness of the lines and such. So today I brought two samples for you to look at. They are the Ford GT race cars. They both raced in Le Mans. There is going to be a follow-up video with some additional samples, two more, perhaps three, so I can also show you the differences. I think this is important as you as a consumer so you know what you're getting into when you're looking at purchasing a model by top speed. Well, enough of me talking about it. Let's get to the cars and you'll see exactly what I'm referring to. This is the 2016 winner Ford GT by Top Speed. The overall silhouette shape of the model is pretty much spot on with the real thing. The best way that I can describe the Top Speed version of this, because as I mentioned, there is an auto art version as well. The best description I can give this is rough. It is a model in the true sense of modeling. And so what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, is that there are a lot of imperfections in this particular model, but they're imperfections that, to be honest, I was okay with, because I think that's what Top Speed was going for. It may not be. I believe that's what they were going for when they produced this, is that this is definitely a model that was hand assembled. And I believe every part of it was probably hand assembled. So as I dig into details, you'll see exactly what I'm referring to. Um, just some of the good points and, and the reason why, again, this is in my collection is that, again, the shape is fantastic. I like that even though this is considered more of a, a budget model at the time, it has all of the aerials, so all the antennas, which is really great. You don't see that on, on every model. And uh, the wheel detail is, is very good, actually, again, for what would be considered, for its time, a budget model. I mean, the, the rims themselves are painted very accurately. They're nice and clean. The print of the Michelin is clear. I really do like that nets, of course, for both wheels. You can see the Brembo brake in the back, which really looks good. And so does the uh, photo etched brake disc. So if I was going to say of anything that looked fairly or, or very accurate to the real thing, it would definitely be the, the wheels, the wheels and the tires. Um, the print for all of the um, sponsorship, this is very good as well. These are uh, decals, and I believe they're, they're water applied, but they look really good. Um, they almost look like they're painted on. That's how good they are. So 
Um, I had to do my research to see if that was the case. But yeah, these are these are water decals, but they're very good. You don't see a, an outer outline of a decal. It's actually the outline of it is very close to the actual edge of the um, sponsorship or ad, as you want to put it. So I do like that. Now, this is a sealed resin model, so none of the parts open. Again, that's expected from something that's made from resin. Just going through the, the rear detail, it's pretty decent. I've always liked this massive diffuser that was on the Ford GT. Obviously created a lot of downforce. Um, you can see further, there is some detail in the back there, which is really good. Um, some of it is, is not so detailed. You can tell it's a molded plastic piece, but you know, from a distance, it looks pretty good. Really like that venting back there. That's really nice. The lights are really good as well. The vent right here, which should be a perforated grill is not, it's a solid piece. It just has a texture on it. The same thing for the um, tail lights. This hole is supposed to go all the way through, it doesn't. But you'd have to look really hard to notice that difference. Other than that, again, I think it looks really good. So, just first thing I noticed, as I was mentioning imperfections, you can see the decal is not perfectly even there, nor is this light here. It's a little off. Let's move on to the front. The headlight detail is acceptable. It's not the best. Uh, if you were to compare this to the Art of Art version, this pales in comparison. But again, it is acceptable for what it is. You have this carbon fiber front splitter, which is pretty decent. Let's just raise this up a little bit so you can see it. You have this front grille here which is actually perforated, believe it or not. So, I was pleasantly surprised at that. But now let's take a closer look at this. If you move over to this closer view of the model, being that it's resin and it's sealed, there's no access to the interior, but you can see some parts. And that steering wheel is really good. I mean, it has a lot of information attached to it. It gives some sense of realism, which is really nice. But, and you do see some other colors in there in regards to like the air conditioning. That's what that hose is for actually. Um, but most of it's all monochrome black. And in the actual car, it's not the case. And that's a cost cutting measure. It's all molded black. But at least the detail is there. And they made sure they covered the most important part. So it looks like all their time and energy went into that steering wheel. Which personally I think is fine. The engine compartment, again, there's no access to it. But you do get a, some of a, somewhat of a glimpse of what's in there. And again, typical top speed model. A lot of it's monochrome black, which would not be the actual way that the mortar would look. As you see, there's some 3D there, which means there's some parts underneath this large intake here. I do like the carbon fiber texture that was applied there on the air box. But again, a lot of it is monochrome. You see some lines there that are lying down. Those are just molded on top of the plastic piece. 
these here vents. Again, on an auto arc, they'd be a little more detailed. They're carbon fiber. There's no actual holes that go through here, and the real thing there would be. This vent here, it's supposed to be perforated grill. It's not simulated, it's a textured piece of plastic. Now, I'm pointing these things out not to bash this model. I like this model a lot, actually. I'm just giving you the realization of what you're paying for when you have a model like this. The paint that goes across here that divides the red from the white. You can see there's some spill over there of the paint, so it did run. And I believe that's evident on both sides. Yeah, it's evident on both sides. So that's what I'm referring to as far as a rough model. This blue runs over a little bit here onto the red. It's a little white specks there. I don't know if that's a scratch or not. Here is the radiator for cooling, you can see there. It's pretty nice. It's, it's all black, which again wouldn't be necessarily accurate, but I do like that it's there. The carbon fiber texture is not too bad. The windshield, or windscreen as some folks may put it. So we can again see the seam here. It's not perfect. You see some paint that's ran over some overspray. On this side, you can see that there. Again, the paint's a little off there. But overall, as I said you know what you're getting when you buy these and the shelf presence on this is fantastic i mean the, the colors themselves are accurate they're nice and vibrant the wheel detail as i said before is very nice so yes if you wanted the ford gt Lamar winning car and you didn't want to pay the out of art prices this was a great alternative now let's get to sample two what you see here is the number 85 am almost winner first place of the 2019 um, Lamar And I think you can see right away that there is a difference in the finishing of this particular model versus the 2016 winner. And the word that comes to mind when I'm looking at this is rich. The colors seem to be more rich. And it's not just because this is a darker color. I think it has a lot to do with the paint itself. This paint has somewhat of a chameleon color code to it. In other words, if you show it in different lights, it has some reflection to it. And it has to do with the speckle that's in the paint more than anything else. So the wheels are pretty much the same as the 2016 car I just had here. Um, you're going to see a lot of similarities. But the main thing that I just wanted to point out on this is just, again, this gradual improvement from top speed. The, the light in the back, it's straight. It's not crooked, nor is that number back there as well. The decals are laid out pretty much the same way as the 
2016 model. And again, everything is pretty much the same. The molded um, equipment that you see here in the back, the large diffuser, the lights. So there is going to be a lot of similarities. That includes the front as well. The lights are seemingly are a lot clearer, but they're not. It's only because the lenses per regulations in 2016, the lenses had to have a, um, a tint to them. And in 2019, they didn't. And the tint was actually, so the 2016 winner still had a clear lens. It just had a little darker tint to it. Whereas the AM cars in 2016 actually had a yellow um, lens. So that's how you could tell at night, especially obviously, um, which were the pro cars versus the AM cars. But again, this lens is a little bit different, but they get the same parts are used. The same parts used for the lights are the same here. So what else is the difference? Well, we're gonna take a look at a closer view here and I'll show you. It has everything to do with the paint. The striping all through here is much more well-defined. You don't see too much overspray or overlay with the paint that was used. The windshield, you don't have any of that. Again, you don't see any errors there. It's still rough, but definitely better than what we saw in the previous sample. The radiator, it's a little more detail to it. It actually has the, um, I don't know what that is as far as the branding, but it has the branding on it. And it just might be exclusive to the wind car. They may have made a little changes or modifications to it. But look at that speckle in the paint. And no, I wouldn't expect that out of the 2016 car, but obviously they didn't have to do it with this car. They could have used a, a flat purple, but they didn't. And just going through again, look how precise the decals are on this example. Much more clear, much more defined. The pinstriping is so much better. There's definitely an improvement that you can see. And of course, like I said, there are a lot of similarities because it's the same mold. But if it wasn't for that 2016 car being a little mile winner, This would have been my choice as far as if I had to choose between the two. It's just a better looking model. Now, I do like the paint scheme of the 2016 versus this 2019 AM car, but if you're a stickler for overall finish, this obviously is a winner. Interior again, it's exactly the same, nothing different. Take a quick spin with both of these together. And this will conclude the first chapter of comparisons. I will follow up with a second video with additional samples. Until then, see you next time.